We're in Rosen 13.4 on recognizing languages. Here we will uh, tackle the second theorem in this section. First, let's review. Again, uh, in 1956, Kleene established that a uh, set is regular if and only if it is recognized by an FSA. And in earlier uh, in the chapter, we reviewed a uh, proof of the only if portion of this theorem. If you want to check out a proof of the if portion of the theorem, you can ch follow that link. And let's uh, look at theorem two. It says that a set is generated by a regular grammar if and only if it is a regular set. And then I'm going to modify it or restate that a little bit because we have theorem one. Um, a set is generated by a regular grammar if and only if it is recognized by finite state automaton. So because we have theorem one, that is an equivalent statement. And then we will use uh, that uh, formulation to do our proof. And later in the uh, chapter, you will find an example of a set that is not regular and that is not recognized by a finite state automaton. All right, just as a reminder, let's take a look at uh, type three grammars or regular grammars. So remember type three grammars are called regular grammars. They're related by theorem two um, to regular sets. And, and remember that a regular grammar is production rules are limited to only having a non-terminal symbol on the left and on the right, you can have a terminal symbol or a terminal symbol followed by a non-terminal symbol. And then you can also have S producing the empty string. So any grammar that we use to build up uh, regular sets will need to look like that if we're going to uh, prove our theorem. And so here's our theorem restated. Uh, set is generated by regular grammar if and only if it is recognized by a finite state automaton. So we'll start with the only if portion, that is we will assume that we have a regular grammar and that is G equal VTSP, remember from 13.1. And we're gonna build a finite state uh, automaton M that recognizes the language produced by G. And we designate S prime as the set of states for our machine, since S is used as the starting symbol for our grammar. And what states will it contain? It'll contain a state for every non-terminal symbol in my, uh, in my grammar. And I'm gonna have one additional state called SF, a final state assuming that F isn't one of my non-terminal symbols. All right, and then I'm gonna associate the uh, traditional starting state for my machine with the start symbol S. And then I'll look at the productions of G to formulate the transitions in my machine as follows. Um, if a producing a non a terminal symbol as a production, then there'll be a um, a transition from S A to S F on input of A, and A producing a ter terminal symbol followed by a non terminal symbol is results in a transition from S A to S B on input of A. Again, A is a terminal symbol, and A and capital A and B are non terminal symbols, and it is possible to have those be equal. Um, and then S0 is a final state uh, when S produces uh, lambda is in the production. Okay. And that is it. That produces a machine that recognizes the language generated by um, G. Let's do an example. This one comes from the book. It's example four from uh, the textbook where I want to produce a, I want to create a machine that recognizes the language generated by this grammar where I have these production rules. So remember I start with a state zero that is associated with my starting state. 
And since I have S producing lambda, that state will be a final state. And now I need to create two more states. I need to create a state for uh, A, so S A, which will be a non-final state. Then I need to create another state, S F, for my final state. And now I'll just walk through my productions. S produces one A will result in a transition from S zero to S A on input of one. S produces zero. Well, zero is a, a terminal symbol, so it's going to go to the final state on input of zero. I've already accounted for S producing lambda. A produces zero A will be a transition from state A back to state A on input of zero. And then A produces one A will have a similar transition. So we'll just do what we've traditionally done and add another input to that arc. And then A produces one is a transition from SA to SF on input of one. And that is the uh, finite state, or is a finite state automaton that recognizes the language generated by G above.